Hey everyone, has this ever happened to you? You have this nifty Apple wallet and you're trying to get your cards in there and they fit just fine. You can stack three or four cards, but then when you try and get them out, then they're just stuck and you prod and you're at the store and there's a sense of urgency. You want to get those things out and finally you just give up. In this video, I'm going to show you a life altering hack that you can do to the Apple wallet so that it'll function perfectly every time and stick with me to the end. And I'm going to tie that into canvas and I'm going to speak as a teacher to other teachers and apply these same principles to how we develop in the canvas learning management system. All right, let's roll that splash screen. All right, so let's start from the top. The Apple Wallet is actually pretty sophisticated. It's a nifty little leather pouch and it's magnetized so it'll go right onto the phone. And the magnet's pretty strong. You know, I felt that when I take it out of my pants, it doesn't really get caught. I guess if you're wearing tight jeans, it might be an issue, but you don't have to worry about it falling off because it's actually a pretty good magnet. And then you can put some cards in there. They say you can have three or four cards. It depends if the cards have the bevel numbers on them and that way they're thicker and so you might not be able to fit so many. But the issue is I have three cards here. I have a license and I have my neighborhood pool card. And so I put those in and Apple has a way that you can take them out. And so there's a little notch right here and you're supposed to put your thumb there and slide it. And if you only have one or two cards, then that works just fine. But if you have three cards or four cards, or if the cards have that bevel with the numbers, it makes it really a tight fit, which is great so they don't fall out, but it makes it really hard to push out. Now a good solution would have been for them to create that notch down at the bottom. So then you could just push them out and then you could get them out and pull them. But what we have is this notch here and no joke, I have to put a lot of pressure in order to get that first card out and then I can take it out. But if you're at the store and you know, there's a sense of urgency and so you have to pay real quick and you slide it off and you have to put a tremendous amount of force and no joke, that's actually hurting my thumb. The amount that I have to slide out to the point that I actually brought some needle nose pliers and so I could maybe ply it out and then I can get the cards out. But that's great for security reasons in that they're not gonna fall out on accident, but it's not great at this store because you're gonna hurt yourself or just not be able to access the cards. So we're gonna do a little hack right here and all you're gonna need is a little bit of packing tape and a pair of scissors. And so we're gonna make a hack for our cards and it's gonna be super easy to get those cards out. So first of all, get a piece of tape and make it more than twice the length of your cards. I'm gonna go extra long and just cut a long piece of tape right here. I'll keep the scissors and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this in half. And so I'll fold it right in the middle, try not to get any bubbles and then I'll fold it outwards. And you don't have to be precise. I'm gonna trim off the excess, but I essentially create a strip of plastic. Get those bubbles out and I didn't do it perfectly. You might do it perfectly, but I'm just gonna trim off this excess right here that it's kind of sticky. It didn't quite overlap perfectly. And for some people, you're gonna want that to be absolutely perfect, but for me, it's fine. We're just gonna go like that. So now I have a strip and I'm gonna put my cards right here in around the middle of the strip and I'm gonna fold the strip over. And so it creates something like a little caddy, like a little cradle right there. And I don't need all of this. And so what I'm going to do, which is why I don't think it was so necessary to pre be precise, is I'm going to cut off a little bit. And so what I'm left with is I have my cards and then I have a little bit up at the top, which I'm just going to fold right over. And so if I put it in the wallet, then notice they'll slide right in. And then I have this little handle that I can pull them right out and it's so easy. I've been doing this since the day I got the wallet and then to put it on the phone, all I'm gonna do is take these two pieces and I'm gonna tuck them over and then I just slide it onto the phone like that. So now people aren't gonna judge me. They're not gonna see, wait, is that a little piece of plastic? That's pretty embarrassing. No, they don't even see it. Nobody's ever even seen it. And then I can slide the wallet off and just pull my cards right out. And so you don't have to hurt your thumb. You don't have to get violent or anything. It's just a real nice, simple hack. If you have one of these Apple wallets and you've been frustrated with the solution that they have in the back, know that they provided an idea, they tested this likely, and it seemed to work, but I don't know that they tested it on all kinds of cards or thick cards. 
And that doesn't mean this isn't functional, it's just with a little creativity, you can maybe do it a little bit better. So this is an Apple wallet hack that I'm really happy to share with you and I hope that if you use the product, then this will change the way that you use the product. But how exactly does this tie into Canvas, the learning management system? So I'm gonna to talk to you as a teacher to fellow teachers and that Canvas is a great product. I think it's like no other product out there. They really changed the game. And that doesn't mean that it's a perfect product. There are certain things about Canvas that we wish they had done differently. You know, if Apple had added that bottom notch, then we could push the cards up and that might change the product. It would only be a slight deviation, but it would have made it a lot better. Now we can go into the Canvas community and suggest updates and suggest features that we want them to implement. But we can also take it upon ourselves to look for unique and creative ways that we can engage the students using the tools that we have. And that might involve using a Canvas discussion thread for something other than a discussion. Maybe you can use it for a class debate or a show and tell. You can have students do digital scrapbooks and share them on the discussion thread. Are there unique ways that you can use the quizzes tool, whether it's new quizzes or classic quizzes? Is, is there any way that you can flip the content around in Canvas to make students curators and creators of content and not only consumers? Is there a different vantage point that we can look at Canvas and that we can use it in a different way? If you've been to any of my conference presentations, a lot of times I use this analogy of a screwdriver. So I've got a screwdriver here, and this is great for screwing things in, unscrewing things, and that's what it's intended for, but you can also use screwdrivers as a chisel. You can use it to scrape things. You can use it to open a can of paint. You can use it to create art. You can use it practically. You can use it creatively. Just because you go to the hardware store and you buy this unique tool for a specific purpose doesn't mean that you can't repurpose it for many other things. So how do we do that in Canvas as teachers and professors? I think one first approach that you should do is if you are teaching, then you should teach yourself a little bit of HTML and CSS. You can look at my myriad, my library of videos for resources on how to use CSS, how to use HTML creatively to really dress up your pages. And my goal is to present information in a way that's unique and novel, not gimmicky. I'm not trying to add bells and whistles just for the sake of it, but I'm looking for creative ways that I can present content to my students. And the Canvas resources are limited. There's an allow list and a deny list. I can't do anything that I ever want with code. I can't just throw JavaScript on the page, for example, or else every time I save it, it'll be scrubbed away. Canvas doesn't like that. But are there other ways that I can use the tools for ways that maybe Canvas, maybe the instructor developers weren't intending for, but would still be effective for my students? So that's my challenge for you. Visit my website, howtocanvas.com, for all kinds of ideas, tips, and tricks, really thinking outside the box. Let's level up our content for our students, truly engage them, and really take ownership of our class content. I feel like if we can communicate to the students that we're interested in developing the content in a way that's aesthetically pleasing and engaging, then they're gonna feel like we enjoy what we do, and they're gonna be more inspired to engage with our content. So that's my Apple Wallet life hack and my Canvas philosophy that I wanna share with you. Until next time. Happy Disney morning!